G'day guys, it's Liam here, and today this will be a, another review on a locomotive. Now, as you can see, this is a Mainline Railways Manor class. Uh, it is actually Lytton Manor, which I believe is now preserved. So, um, again, it's the basic Mainline Railways box, nothing special about it, just very basic. So, I won't bore you with that, and we'll get on to opening it. Right, so, um, I must admit this box is actually in pretty good nick. There's just a little bit of a broken uh, uh, perspex bit there. But other than that, it's actually in quite good order. Um, not really any scratches or dings on it, which is good. I'll just tip it up this way. And uh, we also get a little manual with it, which I'll open before you. Um, and there you can see it has brief history on the manor class, um, you know, where, where they were built, um, all that kind of stuff, and it's got all the maintenance stuff you might need to know, and on the back as well about fitting brake rigging, which I've already done. Um, it's just nice that they include that. Um, so I move that back, and we'll start by getting the tender out. And now for the locomotive itself. Okay, being very careful with this. So, move those out to one side now. Um, and as you can see, there it is. Now, before I actually get on to the actual review, there's something I need to express as a concern. And I'll just move this back. And that is about my mainline railways locomotives that are the Pania and the. 4300. Now, both of these models are exquisite. Really, really nice detail. Absolutely stunning models, just through and through for their age as well. But, um, unfortunately their age is a bit of a setback, as these models will probably be, be getting up on 30 years old now. Um, and, well, both of them have basically conked it. Um, I'll start with the Pania, because that happened first. Now, the Panier I noticed, I actually read about this on RM Web, um, so I know what's actually happened is that the, I've, I've got the, I've unscrewed that so I can take it off. But basically the um, wheels are really, were really loose and the uh, side rods were becoming uh, sort of knotted. Well not knotted, but they were, uh, they weren't for, uh, serving as proper, <coughs> excuse me, as proper side rods and they kept like twisting around and stuff and it's not what you want, and it also causes the motor to have a bit of a fit. So, I tried gluing them back together, and it worked really well. Only when I glued it back together, I must have been a few mil out in terms of alignment. And so now when the wheels uh, spin, the, uh, they sort of don't jam up, but go really stiff over one point, because they're trying to... How do I explain this? But let's just say now the side rods are not in alignment, and they're super glued in place. Well, the, the axles and the wheels are super glued in place, so... <clears throat> basically, what I'm trying to say is that the wheels can turn fine, but once every revolution, it gets really stiff and jams up and the motor doesn't like to run too well. And so, the only way I can sort of solve this is by... Probably either by breaking it, and I don't really want to do that, and fixing it that way. Like, pulling it, a, pulling it right apart and making a new axle. Or... Um just buying a new set of wheels, so I'm thinking I might look into that. So, I'm a little bit disappointed about that, but what can you do? But I don't want to get rid of the model completely, because it is really nice. Um, the 4300, massive disappointment. Um, I actually only got this a week ago, and um, or a week and a half ago now, and yesterday I was running it in, because I hadn't done that yet, and I was running it around, and then it just stops, and I can hear the motor running, so I quickly switch it off. And what had happened was, is that in there, there's like a gearbox. Oh, oops. And, um, one of the gears snapped. Well, it came out of its position, and I can't seem to get the body off. It just doesn't want to budge. I've unscrewed everything and done all this. I've looked for little tabs. I've Googled it on RM Web and all this kind of stuff, but... No immediate sign of a solution, so I'm thinking, sadly, this loco might be a bit of a write-off. However, 
this loco, as you can see, now runs freely because it's got a broken gear. So that means that this loco isn't a total um, write-off because if I was to get another loco, it could be towed, like a wagon. I do have a tender as well, obviously. Um, and that could actually work quite well. You know, it could look okay for double headers. But other than that, it's stuffed. Um, so, we a bit gutted about that, but at the same time, I'm surprisingly alright about it because it's not an absolute write-off. Anyways, back to the manor. Right, so uh, now that we're back with the loco that this video is supposed to be about, I'm sorry, I went a bit off topic there. Um, one of the first things you'll probably notice is that it's um, obviously in BR, Lake Crest, uh, which is very nice. I've got the uh, red red lines as well and the green, which is nice. I prefer that to the, just the standard BR black. Um, and yeah, this is another mainline model, so I'm being very fragile. Oh, I'm being very careful of this. I'm treating it like it's very, very fragile, as you should do with most models, but I'm being extra cautious with this one. Um... Anyway, so we'll uh, bring her a bit closer to the camera, and we'll show you what what it has to um, in in the to, in the form of detail. Right, so starting off at the front, the lighting situation right now actually really well highlights how many rivets there are, or rivet detail, and that looks really nice. And now I think this locomotive has actually been made uh, as it would be in preservation as it actually has the warning for the overhead wiring but I'm not sure whether that's as it would be in preservation or maybe they uh, I, I'm not sure actually maybe they had overhead electric in the later days of this loco's existence I'm not sure but well in BR days anyways um, but I'm not sure about that but it does have them and it's a, mm, it probably could do without but it, it's a little bit of extra it's a, bit, a little bit of extra eye candy really um, so anyways, at the front of this loco, you'll see, yeah, we've got the silver buffers, which are nice. We've got the air hose right there. Uh, we've got the hook. Uh, all of these are separately added. We've got the lamp irons, which is another nice wee feature because they are also separately fitted. Um, we'll come around this side. And as you can see, we've got the, uh, where are we? There we are. So we've got the front of the smoke box. And the um, hinges and the uh, lock thingy, I can't remember what it's called right now, uh, also separately painted silver, which is really nice. And we've got the number there, which is 7827. And we've got another, what appears to be another lamp iron on the front of the smoke box. Um, also got the, obviously the handrail, which runs right around the model, which is separately fitted again. Then we've got like a wee step there underneath the um, we got a wee step underneath the smoke box there for the uh, cleaner or the fireman. Um, and then coming round, we've got the front uh, two wheels, and they are obviously loosely, well, relatively loosely held in place. There's a screw right there, and it's like sprung so that that can move quite freely, which is good. Uh, um, then we've got the uh, more rivet detail along there, we've got the front cylinders which are really nice as well as mentioned in a previous video I do quite like the look of the Great Western cylinders um, we've got some nice little detail, we've got the cylinder drains there and we've got the crosshead there and the piston rod and the valve gear at the top which doesn't move, obviously. The, well, the valve gear at the top doesn't. Then we've got the wheels. There are six of them. Well, drive wheels. We've got the side rods. Now, people often complain that on older models the side rods are really, uh, really out of scale, but I don't think these are actually too bad, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, they're probably a wee bit big, but overall not, not half bad, really, for the edge of this model. Um, also underneath we've got the brake rigging which is separately fitted. As you can see there it says main line. Uh, and then obviously we've got the big name plate which says Litter Manor. And then, oh, something else you might notice is that this model is actually in a gloss finish. Which, well, yeah, pretty much, a, a, I'd say a semi-gloss. Which is also a really, really nice touch. I really like that about the model. 
Then coming around to the smoke box again, we've got the um, dry pipe there, sticking down to the cylinders. And coming along, we've got the nice boiler band striping. On top, we've got the... Focus, focus, there we go. We've got the uh, safety valves there. And then we've got the lovely, very classic GWR Bell Pair firebox. And, of course, the wheel arches. And then, of course, we've got the whistles. Well, the whistles, there's two of them, which GWR locos seem to have. Um, then coming around to the cab, we've got the uh, not nice uh, livery application right there. We've got a little circle there that says D, which is its pulling which is its uh, classification. And we've got 7827 written there. The windows are glazed, which is nice. Then we've got some minor cab detail that could be painted up. I've already painted the regulator red and the um, brake. Um, but ba ba very basic cab detail, but you could do a bit with it. You know, you could put a crew in there very, very easily. And, you know, if you had some gold paint, you could easily, you know, goldy or silvery colored paint, you could easily touch that up which I plan on doing at some point. Then we've got the step and the um, little pipe there and that brings us pretty much to the back of the model and it's pretty much the same on the other side again only this time on this side we've got the uh, a box there which I think is for the mechanism for the screw reverser we've got the actual reversing uh, shaft which runs along there um, and again, we've got the um, wheel arches, little mano right there, a few other bits and pieces, um, apparatus to get down to the valve gear, I would say, for the reverser. And that pretty much brings us back to the front. So, oh, and we've also got a wee pump on this side as well, which is nice. Um, just like I have on the uh, 45XX, which is a really nice wee feature. I like watching that as the loco runs around. Right, so here you can see we've got the uh, tender now, and there's the detail for the back for the front of the tender in terms of uh, crew area, and the coal load isn't bad. I will admit it's very good. It's uh, a lot of um, sort of coal loads are quite um, very copy and pasted, but this one's actually not too bad. There is quite a bit of a fluctuation in sizes of lumps of coal and you might notice it gets smaller towards the front uh, which is a nice wee feature because obviously the smaller bits would have sort of sh been shaken down to the bottom which is a, a nice wee feature for the rivet for the average rivet counter um, we've got the hook there that hooks onto the loco and we've got the you know the uh, handles and the uh, holder for the um, any spare shovels or rakes for the oh, focus for the rakes for the fire. Then coming around we've got the oh, fingerprint on there. Um it's the thing with it being a gloss finish. And we've got the um obviously the wheels, axle boxes, step there, um brake rigging on this as well which you had to separately fit which is nice. Got the water scoop there. Um another step and then we've got on the back this is I don't know uh, um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, let me just start again. Um, there are so many locos, model locos that have mana tenders, I tell you what. Um, I think they became the norm after a while. Um, so this is just another mana tender, but this one is literally a mana tender. Um, so there's, yeah, sort of not a lot to be said other than, you know, this good river detail. More of those, uh, stickers for the electric overhead. Um, some really nice separately added handles there and brake hose on the back as well and the hook and basically the same on the other side really got the really nicely applied uh, British Railways Lake Crest which is really really nice as well then on top we've got obviously got the filler cap and the wee dome there and a, oh, and a lamp iron I've just noticed as well just, just there and, oh, and we've also got lamp irons on the Back of the tender as well. But overall, I must say, this is actually a very, very nice model. Uh, I am very pleased with it. Um, a few, the only minor faults that I have with it is that it, um, 
is a bit... I wouldn't say it's the best runner. I will show you that in a second. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad. Um, I, I seem to have failed to mention up until now that also I've taken the front coupling off. Because locos always look better without a big coupling sticking out the front. So now we'll go on to just doing a bit of a run for you. Uh, just so you can see how it actually runs. I've got my test track just here. So we'll set her up on that. Right, so we've got her on the test track now. And what I said a moment ago about running is, it doesn't really, it's not so great at running slowly. I mean, it can run slowly, but not as slowly as a lot of other model locos can go. And it's also rather noisy, which is a bit of a, a pain, but it's not too bad. I mean, you know, considering this model is relatively old, it's actually surprisingly good at running. So we'll give her some juice and see how she goes. Slowly easing open the controller. So you can see there that she runs okay. Um, I'll send her back again. She's probably quieter in reverse for some reason. Um, yeah, significantly quieter in reverse. Bring her forward again. Um, so the slowest speed by this loco is probably about. About that, maybe. Which is a bit jumpy, and not particularly slow, as far as um, slowness of models goes, but it's not too bad. And, you know, I would normally be running this loco at a higher speed anyway. I mean, they were sort of built more for that, uh, and to be powerful. So, you know, this, it's not too bad. You know, once it gets going, it runs perfectly. It's just slow speed's a bit iffy. So um, we'll put her on the track on Foxford and we'll do a bit of a running session for you. So we'll finish the video with that. Right, so guys, it's now time to do some running. And I'd just like to announce that New Zealand successfully beat Australia in the 2015 Rugby World Cup. Right, so with that said, we'll get some running done, I think. Right, so there you have it guys, that was a review on my Mainline Railways Mana Class. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I think it ended up being a bit longer than first expected, but again, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, uh, remember to give us a like, and uh, yeah, please remember to also comment and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye!